just let me get my computer set up here because we're going to do some Googling today. Oh, let me lower this so I can actually see you out there. There we go. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, today, as we continue with uh, Google it, what are you searching for? I thought we'd actually use Google as a search engine for us. And today we have the, I guess, the two O's of Google overcoming obstacles. So what I thought I would do is, is actually plug that into Google and see what kind of responses we can get from typing in, how can I overcome the obstacles that I face? So let's see what kind of advice Google can give to us. The first image that comes up from our Google search is a pile of money. <laughs> well, I will admit for myself that not having enough money is indeed an obstacle for many of the things that I face, but I've known just too many people for whom money hasn't solved anything for them. In fact, the desire and the search for more and more money just leads to greed and then eventually depression. No, that's not the kind of answer that I'm looking for. There's nothing wrong with having money. There's nothing wrong with wealth. But I find that answer to be too superficial for what we're looking for. I'm looking for something more profound, something deeper, something more substantial. Now, this kind of reminds me of a song on this special music weekend by one of my favorite Christian groups, U2. Now, yeah, U2 is a... No, I'm not joking. You too is a popular group, but listen to their music. Look at their words. There are a lot of Christian themes in the music that they share. And I'm thinking today of, I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You have six blanks on your bulletin insert with the, uh, the sermon notes. And the first blank to fill in is our search on Google leads us to wealth as the first answer but let's go on. Let's see if we can find something more. And so the second image that pops up for us is, oh, okay. Um, I love nature. I love the oceans and the mountains and the deserts and the forests. And as Krista and I drive back and forth and back and forth across the United States, we love all the beautiful things that we are able to see in God's creation around us. And I love the time that I can spend even alone enjoying God's nature. But, you know, um, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's really pretty good, but it doesn't seem to meet yet the deepest needs that we're looking for here. And u two song continues, I have climbed highest mountains, I have run through the fields only to be with you, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. So let's try another one. I'm um, Pastor Scott, and I posed for this picture. And <laughs> no, I'm never going to look like that, and I'm not sure I ever really want muscles like that. And what good is the, just the strength of our body when the obstacles that we face are not merely physical, but are also spiritual and existential in nature? U2 song continues, I have run, I have crawled, I have scaled these city walls only to be with you, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. Okay, we're going to try you again. Google, what have we got? Oh, oh no, none of this really helps. Drugs, alcohol, pornography, even the addiction to food. This seems more like avoidance than overcoming, this seems more like trying to escape from everything rather than overcoming anything. U2 continues, I have kissed honey lips. It was a burning fire like this burning desire, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. We'll give you another try, Google. What's the next image that comes up? Whoa. Whoa. Violence. Terror. Why do so many people and nations even consider this to be an answer to the obstacles that we face? 
individuals shooting innocent people and children in mass murders or for simply ringing their doorbell or turning around in their driveway, Lord have mercy. When nations send out tanks and missiles and bombs to destroy other nations, it only creates chaos and destruction and grief and loss. And aren't those precisely the obstacles that we're hoping to overcome? Give you another chance, Google. What's the next image? A manual of Christian doctrine. U2 sings, I believe in kingdom come, then all the colors will bleed into one, but I still haven't found what I'm looking for. You know, as a group from Northern Ireland, U2 knows all too well how disagreements in doctrine can lead to divisiveness and even warfare. The story is told of a person visiting a town, and the mayor of that town decided to give the visitor a tour of everything that he was very proud of in his little village. And as they were going along, the visitor noticed that there was a church on every corner of every intersection in this town and commented to the mayor, your town, the people in here must really love the Lord. And the mayor replied, I don't know if they love the Lord, but they sure do hate one another. Sad situation, how doctrine can divide. That's six answers for you in your bulletins there. Wealth, meditation, strength, addiction, violence, doctrine. We still haven't found what we're looking for. Maybe somehow we can get closer to it. Something of the mention of a cross in that last verse from you too might help us as we give Google one more chance. What? Well, your bulletin insert says that that means Jesus Christ overcomes. Jesus Christ conquers. But maybe you're more familiar with this one, where we have the inscription, the abbreviation of the inscription that Pilate placed over the cross of Jesus as he suffered and died for us. I-N-R-I, the I is in Latin a J for Jesus. The N is for Nazareth. The R is for Rex, the Latin word for king. And the I is for the Jews. It reads, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. This isn't Latin, this is Greek. And the I again is a J, and the C is like an S, and the J and the S are the first and last letters in Jesus. And the X, if you're familiar with the Cairo, or when we do Xmas, is a CH in Greek, and the C again is the S, and it's the first and last letter of the name Christ, Jesus Christ, N I K A is the root of a Greek word, a verb that means to overcome, to conquer. Jesus Christ conquers. Now, I don't know about you, but I've seen this before on altar paraments. I've seen this on banners hanging on churches. Even chrismons, the things that you make decorate Christian symbols that you place upon a Christmas tree. Jesus Christ overcomes. Jesus is the one who can overcome all of our obstacles. Well, thank you, Google. That was an interesting exercise. But maybe, just maybe, we should go to God's Word for a clearer answer and a deeper understanding of this. In the book of 1 John, part of today's scripture lesson, the Apostle John states it very succinctly for us. Listen again to these words. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. We don't have to go searching hard for this gift of faith. Our baptism into Christ Jesus, into his life, death, and resurrection, is the guarantee of the power of that spirit to overcome the obstacles that we face. Mandisa is a Christian artist who sings a song, Overcomer. I think you guys are going to sing that right after this sermon. 
Perfect. She um, sings this song, and I was first introduced to this song way before I had any appreciation of Christian contemporary music. So it was a surprise to me. And surprising, the source was Hoda Kutb. From the Today Show, one of the hosts of the morning show on NBC. She had just gone through some very serious surgery and over television credited this song, Overcomer, with her being able to endure, to sustain, and to overcome the obstacles of her surgery and healing. Let me share a few words of that song with you. It reads, staring at a stop sign, watching people drive by T-Mac on the radio. Got so much on your mind, nothing's really going to go right. Looking for a ray of hope. Whatever it is you may be going through, I know God's not going to let it get the best of you. You're an overcomer. Everybody's been down, hit the bottom, hit the ground. Oh, you're not alone. Just take a breath. Don't forget. Hang on to God's promises. The same man, the great I am, the one who overcame death, is living inside of you. So just hold tight. Fix your eyes on the one who holds your life. There's nothing Jesus can't do. Jesus wants you to know you're an overcomer. Stay in the fight till the final round. You're not going under because God's holding you right now. You might be down for a moment, feeling like it's hopeless. That's when God reminds you you're an overcomer. Mandisa can sing that song, but even way back in the Old Testament, the prophet Jeremiah knew the truth of that. He had to endure many obstacles to fulfill his calling to be a prophet. People were mocking him. He was, um, he was feeling all sorts of uh, 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 attempts against his life, uh, public torture. So read this verse with me, and you get some idea of where Jeremiah's strength came from together. They will fight against you, but will not overcome you, for I am with you and will rescue you. Yeah, Jeremiah knew of the promises of God that no obstacle would be able to overcome him, for God's presence in his life would sustain and support and deliver him. And then just like Jeremiah, St. Paul faced many of those same obstacles. Read this passage with me. We do not overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, St. Paul also faced in his ministry the obstacles of rejection, of torture and imprisonment. Imagine if we could live our lives fulfilling our callings with the same convictions as Jeremiah and Paul. One of the students that I supervised on her internship year went on to serve three different calls, all with difficult obstacles. One simply was her gender, for many church members rejected her just for being female. And another was that they were all declining, aging, and dying congregations. Then her fourth call was to a parish quite near where I was serving, and she asked me to preach for her installation service. I used Mandisa's song, Overcomer, because I knew that she would need to be reminded again and again that Jesus would overcome any and all obstacles even in this new call, and that she had the strength of the Spirit inside of her to convince her that she indeed was an overcomer. So I shared with her the words from John's Gospel. I shared with them, with the congregation, about how this all means and what the importance of this is. Read these words with me, too. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. It was interesting to me that Pastor Jason used this verse last Sunday to talk about optimism. Well, that fits too, doesn't it? But how well does this fit for overcoming obstacles for all the challenges that we face? Words of strength and promise for us as well. 
Now, it seems to me that the Apostle John is something of a champion of this word, nika, N-I-K-A, to overcome. His gospel begins from creation itself. And you know these words, the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. And to what I believe is the completion of his writings in the last book of the Bible, the book of Revelation, we recently finished our study, a long study of the book of Revelation. took us a while to get through it. We noted how in the first three chapters, John writes letters to the seven churches of his pastoral responsibility. And for each of these churches, he highlights the obstacles that that congregation has faced and ends each letter with a phrase similar to, to the one who overcomes is given promise and hope. And finally, as his revelation comes to a conclusion, we read these words of Jesus. It is finished. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To all who are thirsty, I give freely from the springs of the water of life. All who are victorious, and the word is nika, all who are overcomers will inherit all these blessings, and I will be their God, and they will be my children. Well, let's give Google one more chance here, okay? One more image to come up with, and here we go. What? What? A Nike swoosh? You've seen that before. N-I-K-E is the same root of the word N-I-K-A, to overcome, to conquer. And you know the motto, too, just do it. You can do it because Jesus is the answer to all of our searching. Jesus has overcome every obstacle in his death on the cross and his resurrection to eternal life Jesus has overcome sin in our lives and the threat of death for each one of us and made you and me, all of us together, an overcomer. Amen.